Chapter 9 In Too Deep The faster we're falling, we're stopping and stalling. We're running in circles, again. Well, well, Rick Danger said, folding his beefy arms across his chest. An amused smile passed over his face. I was beginning to think I'd seen the last of you, Midoriya. I'm very sorry for making you wait, Izuku said, bowing deeply. The interior of the opera house was a welcome reprieve from the cold and blustery streets. My business cards took a little longer than expected. Please accept this as an apology. Izuku thrust a disc into Rick's hands, his new card tucked inside the transparent casing. Rick accepted the disc and opened the protective cover. He lifted Izuku's business card and examined it, flipping it over a few times. Nifty design, he said. You do both fashion and events. Something like that, Izuku said. On one side of the card, Okako posed in her polka dot swing dress, her hair bouncing prettily. Her hands rested gracefully on the handlebars of the studio's vintage bicycle and her leg was carefully popped. On the other side, Katsuki's sweaty face and light penetrated hair took the forefront as he screamed into a microphone. Mina leapt wildly in the background. With his contact information repeated on both sides, Izuku had effectively created two business cards in one. He was quite proud of his work. That disc has all the finals from the Skull Crusher concert, Izuku said, straightening himself. They're yours. You can do whatever you like with them. Hey, good kid. Rick said. He beamed. I'll take a look at them and see if they're as good as I remember. Izuku nodded. He steeled himself. That had been the easy part. He bit the inside of his cheek and remembered Katsuki's words of advice. He could do this. There's one more thing, Izuku said. He opened the brown satchel strapped over his shoulder and pulled out a thin sheet of cardstock. He handed it to Rick. Rick took the small rectangular sheet, his smile disappearing. What's this? he asked. Izuku swallowed. My rate card, he said. He tugged on the strap of his satchel. Izuku had collaborated with Kaminari to put that last item together. He'd lowballed himself a little, sure, but Izuku couldn't charge the same rates as someone who already had years of experience as a freelancer. Your rate card, huh? Rick said. Yeah, Izuku replied, ignoring the nervous flipping of his stomach. He'd known that Rick wouldn't be happy about this. He'd prepared for this scenario. Izuku gave Rick his best impression of a confident smile and forced his hands back down to his sides. Those images should provide you with everything you need to know in terms of my abilities, he said. I think you'll find my prices fair. You've been talking to that ground zero prick, Rick muttered, folding Izuku's rate card and shoving it, along with everything else, into his back pocket. Ground zero has nothing to do with this, Izuku said firmly. I'm good at what I do. If you're looking for someone to work free of charge, I'm sure there's plenty of high school students around who'd be excited to get into a few shows. Rick looked personally offended. High school. Christ, you even sound like him, he said scornfully. Take a look at the finals when you have a moment, Izuku said, ignoring Rick's jab. He held his hand out. I look forward to working with you. Rick gripped Izuku's hand, but didn't shake it. We'll see, he said, not a trace of a smile on his face. Izuku responded with the biggest grin he could muster. We certainly will. Izuku left the opera house feeling like he'd lost a few pounds in sweat. He zipped up his winter coat and pulled on his gloves before stepping out onto the darkening streets. He power walked a few blocks then decisively collapsed against the side of a random building. Izuku let out a long breath. There was a chance he'd completely burned that bridge with Rick. Then again, Katsuki had made a valid point. Izuku was too old and too experienced to be offering his services for free. However, Rick's words hadn't exactly been encouraging. Izuku replayed their conversation in his mind, 
wondering if he ought to have done anything differently. He'd perhaps been a little too bold. Izuku's thoughts churned, splicing, and reconstructing his sentences until he could barely remember what he'd actually said. Arg, Izuku groaned, running his hands down his face. He wished he could talk to someone who knew how to handle Rick. Izuku deliberated. He pulled his phone out from his coat pocket and stared at the screen. He hadn't heard from Katsuki since that strange night over a week ago. Izuku remembered what had happened the last time he'd tried to text Katsuki. He bit the inside of his cheek. The worst Katsuki could do was shut him down again. Besides, a lot had happened since then. Who knew, maybe Katsuki would be pleased to learn that Izuku had followed his advice. Izuku pulled his glove off his hand. He held it between his teeth as he typed an experimental message. Finally got my business card to Rick. Gave him a rate card too. He didn't seem too happy about it. Izuku peeled himself off the side of the building. He'd barely walked another block when he received a reply. Deal string you along for a while. Guy's a total a-hole. Sit on it. He'll come to you. Izuku grinned, feeling a little more at ease. He was happy that Katsuki had not only responded, but had done so in a surprisingly positive way. Did that mean that Izuku was allowed to text him now? He shouldn't push his luck. But still. I'll do that. Thanks, smiley face, a brief pause. Whatever. Izuku let out an excited hoop, startling a homeless man rearranging his sleeping bag over one of the city's sidewalk grates. He smiled at the man apologetically and handed him a small bill before returning to his phone. There was one last thing he wanted to say. I have to give you one of my business cards sometime. Izuku crossed the street. The next bus stop wasn't far off. He could make it home in time for dinner and get a good night's sleep before work the next day. Katsuki's response stopped Izuku dead in his tracks. Come over then. Izuku located Katsuki's building without much difficulty after retracing his steps from the coffee shop by his work. As Katsuki buzzed him up, Izuku felt that familiar twinge in his gut that was starting to become an almost welcome sensation. Izuku could hear the music blasting through Katsuki's apartment door before he even got off the elevator. The fast-paced beat and hard-edged guitar were loud enough to make Izuku wonder about the volume on the other side. He wasn't sure if Katsuki would be able to hear him, but he knocked on the door anyways. Not long after the music decreased in volume and Izuku heard heavy footsteps trudge towards him. Katsuki opened the door. Ha ha, Izuku said breathlessly, one hand clasping the strap on his bag. He started to eye the blonde up and down but caught himself. Katsuki was dressed casually in a pair of black sweatpants and a loose graphic t-shirt. Katsuki's clothes were, however, not the first thing that caught Izuku's eye. What caught Izuku's eye was the flat glass palette that Katsuki held in his left hand. His forearm was covered with a variety of wet and dry paint strokes, some flaking and others blending. Splatters of paint adorned his shirt and pants. The look immediately piqued Izuku's interest. Katsuki grunted by way of greeting. He jerked his head towards the interior of his apartment and released the door. Izuku caught it and stepped inside, delighted that Katsuki hadn't simply demanded the car then shut the door in his face. He gasped when he caught a glimpse of the living area and saw exactly why Katsuki was covered in paint. Four completed canvases had been strategically propped against various objects throughout the room. A fifth rested on a standing easel near the room's center, incomplete. Each depicted a human skull in various stages of decay. The backgrounds were dark and moody with garnet and deep grays. Thick paths of fresh paint ran from the top of the completed canvases down through the skulls, marring their pallor with pure blood red. Katsuki's main room had been reorganized to make space for the easel and paintings. An old sheet, stained with paint, had been spread and placed under everything. A side table stood a few feet in front of the easel. Katsuki's skull replica sat on top of it. Oh wow, did you paint all these? 
Izuku asked, awestruck. He crouched down in front of a painting. No, Katsuki said. The goddamn cat did. They're amazing, Izuku said appreciatively. He tentatively reached toward the side of the canvas. It looked like acrylic. Don't touch it, idiot, Katsuki said sharply. They're wet. Izuku retracted his hand. I wasn't going to, he said, frowning. Katsuki glared at Izuku. He set his palette down on a desk strewn with tubes of paint, paint brushes, and a small stack of canvases. So where's the card, he asked. Ah, right. Izuku opened his satchel and pulled out a white cardboard box. He removed the top, withdrew a card and passed it to Katsuki. He tried not to notice when Katsuki's rough fingertips brushed against his. Katsuki examined the card, flipping it over. You used the band, he said. Well, yeah, Izuku said, closing the box and putting it back in his satchel. Katsuki flipped the card back to its other side and frowned. Hmm, he said. He set it down and picked his palette back up. Izuku scratched the back of his head self-consciously. Rick seemed to like my card, he said uncertainly. The business one, at least. Katsuki shrugged. You're the one who told him you'd work for free. He turned towards his easel. He'll get over it. Izuku sighed. I think you were right about it setting a bad precedent, he said. He set his satchel down beside him. I tried to compromise by giving him the finals from that show free of charge. Hopefully that'll be enough to sell him on my work. Izuku groaned. I think I got too cocky. I ended up telling him that if he wanted free labor, he could hire a high school student. Ha, Katsuki said. He mixed a couple of colors on his palette and applied the new tone to his canvas. Nice. Izuku grinned. Izuku didn't have any further reason to be here, but at the same time, Katsuki hadn't asked him to leave. Instead of letting himself out, Izuku took a cautious step closer. It looked like Katsuki was building up shadows around the skull's eye sockets and nasal cavity. I had no idea you painted, Izuku said, fascinated by another unexpected facet of the blonde. Do you exhibit? Not, nah, Katsuki said, adding a few more strokes. The painted lady takes them and sells them. Brings in extra money for the band. Izuku was starting to think there wasn't anything Katsuki did that wasn't for the band. The painted lady is an art store. Tattoo parlor, Katsuki corrected. Where I had my ink done. They pick up local artists and display there. It's easy money. If you know how to paint. Izuku watched Katsuki's practiced strokes. This takes me back to college. Katsuki's eyes flashed over to Izuku. You paint, he asked. Uh. Sort of. Izuku said, who had taken exactly one landscape painting class back in first year. He'd done his best, but it hadn't exactly been his strongest subject. Katsuki regarded Izuku with what might have been a challenging stare. He gestured towards the stack of canvases on his desk. Take one, he said. He used his paintbrush to point towards the wall that separated the apartment's main area from the bedroom. Spare easel somewhere over there. Izuku had learned by now not to question Katsuki's resolve. He nodded enthusiastically, thoroughly pleased with this unexpected turn of events. He returned to the apartment entryway to take off his coat and shoes before setting off to locate the spare easel. He was thrilled that Katsuki didn't seem to mind having him around. It made his heart sore. I'll do my best, Izuku said brightly. Good for you, Katsuki drawled. Izuku found the easel shoved behind one of Katsuki's guitars. He moved the instrument with the same level of caution he used when dealing with the studio's cameras. You've sure got a lot of guitars, Izuku commented conversationally. How many do you own in total? Four. Five. Six. Katsuki said, swishing his paintbrush in a plastic cup filled with dirty water. 
he pressed the brush against the rim then dabbed the excess water off on his forearm. When he glanced over at Izuku his jaw clenched. If you drop that I'll kill you, he said, his eye twitching. Don't worry, Izuku said solemnly. I know how to handle expensive equipment. He set Katsuki's guitar aside carefully then grabbed the easel. Katsuki put his brush and palette down long enough to shift his stand over. Izuku set his spare easel up on top of the sheet, leaving a couple of feet between him and Katsuki. You can't use them all for shows, he continued. Course not, Katsuki retorted. Once for shows. Then there's a backup in case something goes wrong. Katsuki mixed a couple of shades together on his palette. Pink face has my acoustic. I've got a bass, one that's better for studio, and my old one from high school. You kept your first guitar, Izuku said in realization. He pressed his lips together. If he had to guess he'd say that was the one he'd seen Katsuki practicing with. That's awfully sentimental of you. Shut it, nerd, Katsuki growled. It's a good guitar and it still works. Why the hell would I get rid of it? Izuku hummed a little. He chose not to answer Katsuki's question. I'm a little jealous, Izuku admitted. I wish I could afford a backup camera. Izuku examined the canvases stacked on Katsuki's desk. I'm saving for one, but it's taking me a while to put a couple grand away. He picked a canvas then set it on the easel. I'm hoping if things go well with Rick, that day will come sooner rather than later. Don't rely on one person, Katsuki said automatically. You'll only screw yourself. You've got cards now, so effing use them. Katsuki pointed towards Izuku's canvas distractedly. I primed them the other day, so you're good to go. Palettes are in the second drawer under the skull. It seemed to Izuku that Katsuki was a veritable fountain of knowledge when it came to self-promotion. Thanks, he said. He smiled at Katsuki fondly. You've given me so much advice, I wish there was something I could do for you. He paused, an idea coming to mind. Hey, do you want a copy of everything I took at your show? Izuku asked. I can put a disc together. The photos would be yours, so you can do whatever you want with them. Katsuki glared at Izuku. What makes you think I want your stuff? He asked. Oh, Izuku said. He deflated. Okay. Katsuki fell silent. He frowned at his canvas. Just use file sharing and email them or something, he muttered. Izuku would have very much liked another excuse to visit Katsuki, but he'd take it. No problem, he said, perking up. If that's what you want. Katsuki cursed under his breath. Izuku went over to the side table and pulled out the second drawer. Neat skull, he commented. He located a palette and took it out. It looks good for a replica. Katsuki stopped painting. He eyed Izuku from around the edge of his canvas. Touch it, he said. It was an odd request, but Izuku didn't think much of it. He ran a finger over the skull's somewhat bumpy cranium, then tapped the top. It seems pretty light, Izuku said, bending down to examine it fully. What's with all the little holes? It's real, Katsuki said. Izuku raised an eyebrow and turned his gaze towards Katsuki. No it isn't, he said. It's effing real, Deku. Izuku looked back at the skull. That's a real human skull. Yep. Izuku stared at the skull, then yelped and leapt backwards, almost dropping his palate. Katsuki wheezed then raised his fist to his mouth, faking a cough. That's real. Izuku asked shrilly, pointing at the offending object. Why do you have a human skull? I got it from the last guy who pissed me off, Katsuki sneered through his fist, his face reddening. Izuku wiped his hand on his shirt as though it were contaminated. You're full of, he said. A shudder ran through his body. He eyed the skull warily as he backed away. Where'd you really get it? Please don't say you robbed a grave. 
Katsuki lowered his fist, though his mouth still trembled. Taxidermy shop, he said. I found it a few years back. And you bought it? Izuku asked in disbelief. Duh. You find a human skull for sale and you're not gonna buy it? The look on Katsuki's face clearly indicated that he felt his question was rhetorical. And you call me weird, Izuku muttered, tearing his gaze away from the skull. He returned to Katsuki's desk and squeezed a selection of paints onto his palette. You are weird, Katsuki retorted. Yeah well, maybe we're both a little weird. Katsuki huffed. Izuku shook his head and turned his attention to his blank canvas. The empty space stared up at him. Still lives were outside of Izuku's narrow range of ability. The darkened view from Katsuki's apartment only led to another building, not exactly a landscape. Izuku glanced to his right. Katsuki worked with quiet intensity. His brow furrowed as his gaze flickered back and forth between palette and canvas. Dried paint flaked off his forearm as his muscles shifted. It was both similar to and different from watching him perform. Izuku looked back at his canvas. If he couldn't paint a still life, there was no way he'd be able to paint a figure. He'd stick with the skull. Katsuki and Izuku worked in relative silence, Katsuki's music playing in the background. Izuku caught the occasional faint pinging of a phone but it went ignored. Despite his uncertainty when it came to his companion, Izuku was having a great time. He'd had to stop himself from humming more than once. A soft mew distracted Izuku. He glanced over his shoulder, Katsuki's tawny cat was watching the two of them from a safe distance. The tip of her tail slowly flicked back and forth along the floor. Hello again, Izuku said kindly. He wondered where she'd come from, although he supposed there were no shortage of hiding places for her in the overstocked apartment. The cat looked at Izuku, completely still save for the tip of her tail. Izuku set his palette and brushed down and approached her cautiously. He crouched down in front of her and slowly reached for her tag. Izuku grasped the trinket and turned it over. Missy, he read aloud. Cute name. Izuku looked at Missy. Missy looked at Izuku. Izuku reached out to rub Missy's head. Missy promptly bit Izuku's fingertip. Izuku hissed and recoiled while Missy darted over to Katsuki. He watched the cat take a great leap, sinking her claws into the back of Katsuki's sweatpants. She climbed up the blonde's back effortlessly and perched on his shoulder before turning her sharp gaze back on Izuku. What a mean cat, Izuku said, returning to his easel. He burst into laughter when Missy suddenly began to gnaw ferociously on Katsuki's ear. She's a effing a-hole, Katsuki replied, batting Missy's mouth away. Quit laughing. You'd be an a-hole too if your family ditched you. Izuku's smile faded. She's a rescue, he asked. No, Katsuki said, prying Missy away from his ear a second time. She lives here. Crappy owner didn't bother to take her with him when he moved out. Izuku's jaw dropped. What? That's horrible. Katsuki glowered. She was half effing starved when I moved in too, he said. I called the number on the tag, but the head who answered put on some stupid act like she wasn't his. Poor thing, Izuku said sympathetically. I guess I can't fault her too much. He smiled at Katsuki. But if you're letting her stay with you, doesn't that basically make her your cat? No way, Katsuki said. She's pretty good at climbing the trees outside. She comes and goes when she wants. But you're taking care of her, Izuku pointed out. You have a cat tree, and I'm sure you feed her too. Shut up, Katsuki growled. His grip on the paintbrush tightened. She ain't my cat. She doesn't belong to anybody. He glared at Izuku. She's free do whatever she wants. It's better that way. I wonder, Izuku murmured. Katsuki's words were troubling, but Izuku supposed it was sweet that he cared for her at all. Katsuki snarled in displeasure. His eyes snapped over to Izuku's canvas. What, 
that's it, he demanded, jabbing his brush at the painting. Izuka bristled. I'm not done yet, he said. I was just getting the basics down. Gonna be a real boring painting if all you paint is what you see, Katsuki sneered. He turned back to his canvas moodily. Izuka frowned. He studied Katsuki's technique, then looked at the four completed paintings. Katsuki's prior knowledge of composition suddenly made perfect sense. Katsuki's short, dry brush strokes gave off an aggressive energy, much like Katsuki himself. Izuka felt as though he were standing next to the world's angriest de guess. It was interesting that his personality shone through his work like that. It gave Izuku an idea. Like I said, Izuku asserted, determinately taking up his brush. I'm not done yet. Izuku decisively chose a few bold colors he hadn't used yet. Shades of purple, yellow, and blue ought to make his bland canvas a little more interesting. He looked at his painting and analyzed it as though it were a puzzle to solve. Don't just paint what you see, he thought. Izuku took a bold swipe of purple and blended it with cobalt. He painted a long, sweeping stroke along the edge of the skull, then studied his handiwork. He wondered if he ought to go bolder. His hesitation soon transformed into uncertainty. Overlapping thoughts began to swirl in his mind, combining and twisting and breaking apart. Izuka chased that feeling. He let his mind take over as he began to paint line after line of rich, swirling hues. Greens appeared where blue and yellow mixed. Izuka muttered to himself as he started to expand his scheme. Izuka lost track of time. It wasn't until he smiled to himself over a particularly satisfying stroke that he glanced to his right and caught Katsuki's eye. Katsuki's gaze immediately shifted to Izuku's canvas, his expression unreadable. Izuku took a step backward and examined his work. His churning brush stroke had overtaken the entirety of his canvas, giving Izuku's painting an anxious mood. He looked at Katsuki's canvas. If Katsuki was a degas, Izuku was a munch. Yours looks great, Izuku said sincerely. You're a really talented painter. Katsuki scowled. F off, he said. He continued to stare at Izuku's painting. How long have you been working on this series? Izuku asked curiously. A few days, Katsuki replied distractedly. In and around a day job. No way. Izuku gave Katsuki an incredulous look. You've completed five paintings in three days, on top of working full time. Katsuki shrugged. It wasn't that hard, he said. Izuku's brow creased. He knew that Katsuki was taking on the bulk of the workload when it came to running the antiheroes, and Izuku had already seen him pull an all-nighter. It was probably a bit hypocritical of him to be concerned, but... Ka-chan, Izuku said. Are you getting any sleep at all? Katsuki looked momentarily surprised, but he quickly covered it up. When I can, he grumbled. Not that it's any of your damned business. Okay, Izuku said quietly. We've got a tour coming up next month, Katsuki said defensively. The band could use the extra cash. Katsuki suddenly swore. He picked Missy up off his shoulder and set her down on the ground. A hole, he muttered, rubbing his ear. Izuku bit his lip. He wanted to press Katsuki, but he knew that it probably wouldn't end well. Your paintings must sell at a decent price, he said instead. Should be around a grand and a half between the five of them, Katsuki replied confidently. Izuku chuckled. Geez, he said. Maybe I should try selling mine. Katsuki stared at Izuku. No way, he said. No one will buy that. Why not? Izuku looked at his painting. It's a goddamn mess, Deku. I don't know, Izuku said. I kind of like it. It's more interesting than anything I painted in college. Katsuki scoffed. It looks like a finger painting. Hey. Spurred on by a sudden vindictiveness, Izuku took his thick paint brush, swathed it in purple paint, 
and flicked it at Katsuki. It was unfortunate for both of them that Katsuki managed to dodge Izuku's attack. Instead of hitting Katsuki, the paint splattered in great purple gobs right through the center of Katsuki's canvas. Izuku cried out in horror. Katsuki drew a sharp breath. Izuku raised his hands to his mouth, his paintbrush clattering to the floor. He'd really done it now. He watched with wide eyes as the paint slowly began to streak downward through Katsuki's beautiful painting. Oh my god, Ka-chan, Izuku whispered through his hands. I'm so sorry. Katsuki stared at his painting wordlessly. Izuku, awash with guilt, was starting to fear for his life. He wondered whether he ought to beat a hasty retreat. God, I'm sorry, he repeated, taking a step backwards. It's fine. Izuku froze. What? Katsuki turned his narrowed gaze on Izuku. It's done now, ain't it, he said. Looks stupid, but whatever. Some hipster dumb, will probably think it's unique and buy it for twice its value. Izuku stared at Katsuki. He couldn't believe his ears. I'm sure we can get most of it off while it's still wet, he tried. It might only need a couple of touch UPS. Leave it, Katsuki snapped. Izuku was flabbergasted. But. Katsuki snarled. I said leave it. Izuku worried his bottom lip. He didn't like this. He damaged Katsuki's painting. It was up to him to set things right. Izuku paused, then bent down and picked up his paintbrush. He thrust the tool into Katsuki's hands. Here, Izuku said. Mess mine up too. Katsuki looked at Izuku with a bewildered expression. You effing serious, he asked. Yeah. Izuku stepped out of the way and gestured towards his painting encouragingly. Katsuki gave Izuku a strange look before sighing heavily and turning to Izuku's canvas. He swathed the paintbrush in deep gray and wrote the word sad across the upper half of the painting with purposeful strokes. Ah, hey. Izuku said. He cracked a smile. My painting isn't sad. Katsuki looked at Izuku evenly. It is now, he said. Yeah well, I still like it, Izuku said. I think I'll hang it in my apartment. Katsuki stared at Izuku. You want to hang that, he said, pointing at Izuku's painting with the paintbrush. Definitely, Izuku said. His smile started to turn into a smirk. I think you made it better. Katsuki dipped the paintbrush back into the gray paint. He didn't break eye contact with Izuku as he slowly wrote the word no through the center of the canvas. Izuku started to laugh. Stop, he said, setting his palette aside. He took a step towards Katsuki, attempting to grab the paintbrush from his hands. You've already had your revenge. Katsuki sidestepped Izuku easily, dipping the brush back into the paint. Don't tell me what to do, he said. As he brought the paintbrush to the canvas, Izuku lunged and tore the brush out of Katsuki's hand. Oi! Izuku took a step back, holding the brush triumphantly. That's enough, he said between breaths, his shoulders shaking. I'll decide when I'm done, Katsuki said, his red eyes glinting. He set his palette down and closed the distance between them in half a second. Katsuki made a grab for Izuku's wrist while simultaneously swinging his other arm around behind him. Izuku dodged Katsuki's hand but the blonde's arm had already hooked around his waist, pulling him closer. Izuku held the paintbrush over his head, and Katsuki effortlessly reached up and seized hold of his wrist. Think you're being clever, you little. Katsuki sneered. Izuku tried to wrench his hand away but Katsuki's grip was like iron. God damn it. Izuku cried out in frustration as Katsuki successfully pried the paintbrush from his fingers. He'd have to up his strength training. How are you so strong? You think that's strong? Katsuki taunted. A lopsided grin spread over his face and his grip on Izuku's waist tightened. Izuku immediately stopped laughing as a throng of butterflies fluttered up through his insides. You haven't seen. 
Oh oh. Izuku said. His whole body suddenly felt very hot. Maybe you should show me then. Katsuki seemed taken aback but he quickly recovered. I could bend you into a goddamn pretzel, you know, he sneered, leaning in closer. Izuku leaned backwards, grabbing hold of Katsuki's arm for balance. But you won't, he said. His lips parted slightly. Katsuki's intense gaze burrowed into him. How are you so sure, he growled, his voice becoming quieter. They'd played this game before. Izuku's answer back then had been juvenile. He had a different one to give this time. Because I trust you, Izuku said. The words came easily. Katsuki looked troubled. How can you say that, he muttered. You don't even know me. But I want to, Izuku murmured. He held Katsuki's gaze evenly. Katsuki's eyes became unfocused as they drifted down to Izuku's mouth. Oh yeah, he said. Yeah, Izuku breathed. This felt different from their last encounter. Katsuki's eyes looked like they were asking something of Izuku, and he was all too happy to oblige. Their mouths were no more than an inch apart when the support around Izuku's waist suddenly vanished. Izuku stumbled backwards, just barely managing to catch himself. When he looked up, Katsuki was giving him a scathing glare, his face aflame. What the hell did you do? Katsuki demanded. Izuku blinked at Katsuki stupidly. Wait, what? He tried to gather himself. I thought. You thought what? Katsuki snapped. You know what? I don't care. Get out. Izuku's mind was going into overdrive. Wait, he said. Ka-chan. I said get the hell out. Katsuki roared, grabbing Izuku by the back of his shirt and thrusting him towards the door. Izuku was barely able to grab his belongings before Katsuki shoved him into the hallway and slammed the door in his face. Izuku stared at the closed door, confused and hurt. One of his shoes tumbled from his arms and onto the ground with a soft thud. His face burned with shame as he set his other shoe and satchel down and shrugged into his winter coat. As he turned to leave, the door opened again. Take your, painting with you, Katsuki snarled, thrusting the wet canvas into Izuku's hands. He shut the door before Izuku had a chance to respond. Izuku looked at his painting and sighed unhappily. He was sure things had been different this time. Katsuki had seemed into it. Izuku groaned, at a total loss. He trudged over to the elevator. Katsuki really wouldn't want to talk to him ever again now. Things had finally started to go well and he'd f at it all up. The journey home was slow and painful. Izuku used the time to review his actions over and over again, driving himself mad. Izuku spent the next two days sulking and beating himself up. He was feeling pretty despondent up until a new message distracted him from his self-loathing long enough to replace it with overwhelming confusion. When were you getting me that disc? 